Come on in, pull up a chair. The Gaming Gang Dispatch is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang Dispatch, brought to you by thegaminggang.com, which I happen to be the founder and editor-in-chief. So welcome aboard. Tonight is Tuesday, January 11th, 2022. This is live stream 738. Eight. This is your first time joining me. Let me point out this is super, super casual. Just hanging out, talking about the latest in tabletop gaming news and taking a look at a tabletop game. So we are certainly not engaging in rocket surgery by any stretch of the imagination. So what we are doing tonight is we are taking a first look and paging through the Adventurer Conqueror King. Player's Companion from Autark LLC. And we'll take a look at this after we tackle tonight's gaming news. Do want to mention, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when the dispatch Streams live Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. It'll also inform me when I upload other videos, such as my upcoming look at Pathfinder Lost Omens Monsters of Myth. <laughs> yes. So that is on the near horizon. I have got a lot of videos to share with you. And of course, we are in the midst of the old school for the new year's celebration so we are also focusing on role-playing games that have that old school vibe they don't have to necessarily be osr but they do have kind of that uh you know party like it's 1974 to 79-ish vibe of course when you're not watching videos on the gaming gang channel be sure to visit my home website, thegaminggang.com, for the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Lastly, this is a live stream, so that means there is chat available. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay, but I do my best to pay attention to chat. So if you want to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question, a comment, by all means, chime in, and I will do my best to respond. So far, who do we got cooking? We've got uh, the Motor City Madman, who was the first out the gate, saying hello tonight. We've got Jason Bratley, who, uh, for some reason, that name's not ringing a bell. This might be the first visit from Jason, or maybe he's, he's only popped in a time or two before. Omenal and Kevin R. Smith are here, both of which happen to be reviewers for thegaminggang.com. The Madman happens to be one of our chat moderators, so he is uh, lugging around the ban hammer with him, as does Flaming Huron, who is with us as well. John Vogel's uh, popping in also. So I think, I think I'm caught up. I think I've said hello to everyone. Uh, so Kevin says they're interested in seeing that Monsters of Myth review. They're saying one of the uh, Pathfinder channels that they subscribed to was not particularly impressed with it. Well, uh, it's going to be a while for me to review it. So it, we are going to take a first look at it. I got to point out, 
it's not real thick for $35, $34.99. But uh, not a huge page count. So that may have, uh, you know, entered into the to the thought process. It is 128 pages long with the, uh, the final page actually is an ad in the back. So Clint Gibson has joined us. Good to see Clint. We've got uh, a good uh, chat off and running. Jason says they tend to comment on the videos. Rarely do they get to watch live as it's 1 a.m. there in the U.K. Omanal says 128-page book like the old Monster Manual. Yes, like the old AD&D Monster Manual clocking in it. Was it 128 or was it 112? Because I remember one of them, either the player's handbook or the monster manual is 112. And the other book is 128. All right. So we got a lot cooking tonight. Uh, we got a comment to, well, comment to share after we ta- tackle the news before we take a look at the Axe Player's Companion. But, uh, Kind of interesting. I'm sure I'll piss somebody off or multiple somebodies. It's me. Hunter is also popping on in and saying howdy. Kevin says uh, supposedly the Monsters of Myth is not a monster manual type thing. It's only 20 monsters with a lot of detail and lore. Well, we will we will get a peek. I got to be very honest. A lot of times with a lot of the Pathfinder stuff, what I try to do is I try to share the physical first looks, you know, for the books and that. And then I like to have my reviewers tackle it. As Sammy tends to tackle a lot of the Pathfinder stuff. And I am actually going to be reviewing the next Pathfinder Adventure Path, which I think is only a three-parter. And she's going to tackle the next Starfinder because uh, I've been tackling... Starfinder. I I have not actually done a review for a full Pathfinder Adventure Path yet, because I gotta be honest, I haven't gotten all of them <laughs> to review. That that has been fixed with Paizo, with my friends over at Paizo. Everything is is fixed now, where it's okay. It's not like oh hey, here's the first chapter of this Adventure Path. Oh hey, here Jeff, here's the last chapter of the Adventure Path. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> Doug Roberts is with us in chat, too. Very cool. All right. Arriving this month from Roxley Games is Radlands. Here's what I know. Civilization is gone. Water is precious. Competition is savage. Radlands is a competitive dueling card game about identifying and exploiting fiercely powerful card synergy. Act as a leader of your post-apocalyptic group of survivors in a tooth-and-nail fight to protect your three camps from a vicious rival tribe. If all of them are destroyed, you lose the game. The main resource in the game is water. You will spend it to play people and events and to use the abilities of cards you already have on the table. People protect your camps and provide useful abilities, while events are powerful effects that take time to pay off. Both players draw cards from the same deck. All cards can either be played to the table or discarded for quick junk effects. To win, you need to manage your cards and water wisely. Use people and event cards to protect your last three remaining camps from a vicious rival tribe in this inappropriately colorful and tightly designed post-apocalyptic tooth and nail fight to the bitter end. You can set up and teach the game in about a minute. All right, I'm going to hold these people to it. I might just go out there and buy this game just to prove whether you can or cannot teach this game in a minute. Features text, minimal cards, and a short rule book. It's designed by former Magic the Gathering external developer Daniel Kichnik. Sorry if I got that wrong, Daniel. I'm sure I did. It gives the experience of a huge, expandable card game in a small box that actually fits on your shelf. Radlands is for two players, ages 14 and up, plays in 20 to 40 minutes. Does carry an MSRP of $25 for the standard edition. 
which if you see, there's kind of like a long box sitting there in that shot. That is the standard edition. There is a deluxe edition, which also includes some uh, game mats, and that carries an MSRP of $60. And Radlands is hitting stores come January 26th. Sweet. So it's kind of cool. I always dig, yeah, the kind of Mad Max post-apocalyptic setting. So I was always a big fan of of uh, Car Wars way back in the day. Always kind of kind of dug, you know, the kind of post-apocalyptic thing. So this could be kind of cool. And uh, I gotta say, for just the basic set, twenty five dollars. There you go. There's the look at what the standard box, I believe, looks like. Could be pretty cool. Could be pretty good. Jason says that uh, they just had the RuneQuest starter set arrived, and they had first learned about it here on the Gaming Gang Dispatch, so they wanted to say thank you. You're very welcome. Very welcome. I uh, am a huge fan of all things Chaosium. They're good pals of mine. Free League Publishing, of course, Cubicle 7 Entertainment. So I like to share very cool stuff from folks that I am friends with. But then again, if something's not up to snuff, I, I say it. <laughs> I talk about it as well. Moving right along, there's an unusual-looking board game, which is on the horizon, from Unexpected Games. Here's the skinny on Voices in My Head. Robbing that bank was not your brightest moment. Should you just confess or try to get away with it? As you prepare to testify in court, conflicting thoughts fill your head. Which voice should you listen to? Take control of different aspects of Guy's personality as a prosecutor tries to convict him. From honesty to selfishness, each persona has a different secret goal. Just about anything can happen in this wacky trial, and your actions will determine Guy's fate. Yes, Guy Smiley gone bad. From the prosecutor to the personas, everyone has a unique role to play in this unpredictable trial. The fight takes place both inside the courtroom and inside Guy's mind. His focus and goals will swing wildly as players grab control of different regions of his mind. Even a small action like a yawn or a wink at the wrong moment can have drastic effects on the trial. The prosecutor's goal is to have more jurors think Guy is guilty than innocent at the end of the game. All other players take on different aspects of Guy's personality, such as honesty or selfishness, and strive to fulfill their hidden goals. Each trial card presents a pivotal moment in the court case. How Guy reacts to these moments will place tokens on the jurors to help or hinder your goal. As Guy continues to testify, what impulses will you choose to control, and how will you sway the jury's opinion? Will Guy go to prison? Will he make a fool of himself in the courtroom? Will his lawyer finally win a case? Will he ever figure out what was in that breakfast burrito? The case rests in your hands. Voices in my head is for three to six players, ages 12 and up. Plays around one to two hours. It's going to carry an MSRP of $39.95 when it arrives in Q1. I have to say, I ran across this today, and I thought it was kind of funny because it was just like last week. There was discussion in chat about, well, what happened with Corey Canizia? And he formed or joined a new game design uh, company. And sure enough, this is designed by Corey Canizia. So Jason says, wow, this game looks a little too close to real life. Then again, the voices tell me it's okay. Joshua Garlock is joining us in chat. Welcome aboard, Joshua. So Omenhal says, wow, I have no idea how I feel about this game. So conflicted like Guy. Yes. This does seem pretty odd. So 
Doug says they've got too many voices in his head already. They doesn't need any more. Let's move on to some role-playing game news. Because pre-orders are now open for the 5th edition Handy Monsters Annual 2022 Bestiary. And here's the scoop from Handiwork Games. Monsters! The first Handy Monsters Annual brings you a collection of 51 unique 5e monsters to frighten, challenge, and delight your players. Created across the year at HandyMonsters.com, the annual collects the work of some of the most experienced 5e designers, artists, and graphic designers in one beautiful volume. This is meant for play. At HandyMonsters.com, we love monsters at work at the table. That means they have an interesting feature related to the rules and are designed to provide an interesting challenge. They're not just a list of stats and a bunch of hit points. They all have engaging lore, which gives them a place in your game world and hooks to inspire you as Game Master and for your players to grab onto at the table. Every monster in this book comes with its own full-page entry, and everyone is illustrated. The annual includes a CR index for your convenience and an introduction about their process of creating these monsters for your interest. The lead designer at Handy Monsters is Jacob Rogers, Jacob has done tons of very highly regarded work in the 5e space, from Adventures in Middle-Earth, Beowulf, Age of Heroes, Scarred Lands, Creature Collection 5e, to Symborum 5e. Jacob really knows the 5e system inside out. The artist is Scott Purdy. Scott is likewise an industry veteran, and it would be quicker to list the company Scott has not worked for, as opposed to work for. Scott's preferred subject is monsters and it's easy to see why he's a brilliant artist layout and graphic design is by paul bourne paul is without doubt one of the most talented and meticulous layout artists in the business paul continues to delight both those well versed in layout and those who just enjoy a cool logo and an easy to read page overseeing all of this is john hodgson john set up handiwork games in 2019 after decades of working in the industry. You can pre-order the 64-page Handy Monster Annual, which I believe is a soft cover, for approximately $17.99, because, of course, this is coming from... How did I get Cubicle 7 games popping up? Why, I da! It's not. It's Handy Work Games. Anyway, you can pre-order the annual for $17.99 and grab the PDF right now over at DriveThruRPG for $7.99. Kind of cool. So, we were talking about Pathfinder monsters. I guess now we're talking about 5e monsters. All right, next up, available as a pay-what-you-want at DriveThruRPG from Prince of Nothing is the No Art Punk Volume 1 collection of OSR adventures. And here's the scoop. Hey, you. You like D&D? Are you tired of art punk? Are your eyes still bleeding from funky font choices and garish layout nonsense while all you want to do is kill goblins in a beautifully jackade dungeon? Do you want your children to be safe? Well, so do I. Everyone is always talking about art punk, but no one does anything about it. Today, that changes. It's with immense pride, conviction, confidence, and other emotions that we present to you the official Prince of Nothing No Art Punk Contest, where we drive back the dirty art punk hordes by making modules that exemplify the craftsmanship, finesse, and resistance to change that the OSR stands for. The following is actually a compilation containing the eight best entries from this universally celebrated and critically acclaimed No Art Punk competition. You will find within no fancy layouts, graphic design high school projects, goofy ideas, or political finger wagging. Instead, the talents of these chosen few have been devoted to the highest achievement, the creation of great adventures using using 
using, what kind of word is that? Using old school rule systems. The contestants were restricted to using only those creatures, spells, and items they could find in the published body of old school D&D. With one exception being allowed, one item, monster, and spell each. The results speak for themselves. The volume includes adventures for Rules Compendium, Osric, Axe, Labyrinth Lord, OSC, and Worlds Without Number, or their closest old school counterparts. The proceeds for this will be donated to the Autism Research Institute for the first three months. This has been out a couple of weeks, I believe. After that, this is going to be freely available. Glory to the OSR! The 145-page PDF of the No Art Punk Volume 1 Compendium is available, as I mentioned before, as a pay-what-you-want with a suggested amount of $10 over at drive Through RPG. I'm chuckling because yesterday I shared the bundle of holding that had the third-party Mjörkberg, Borkborg, Adventures and uh, miniatures. There's there was a, a skirmish miniatures rule system in there as well, and of course, that is the grandfather of all art punk. So I was talking about how I'm not really a fan. Well, those of you who aren't fans who just want good, solid, old school Renaissance adventures, look no further. Than the No Art Punk Volume 1 compilation. All righty then, on to my final news piece. Cubicle 7 Entertainment has released the Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound Shadows in the Mist RPG campaign. It's out in print and PDF. Here's the deets there's a rot in the heart of Anvilgard. While the anvils of the Heldenhammer looked outward, a cabal of Elven outcasts have taken root within the city. Known as the Black Scale Coil, this mysterious group has infiltrated every facet of Anvil Guard society and seeks to make the city their own. But the coil is not all there is to worry about. An even greater threat lurks in the mist. Venture into the deadly mist shrouded streets of Anvil Guard in the first ever campaign for Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound. Shadows in the Mist is a sprawling six-part campaign set within the free city of Anvilgard and sees a group of spellbound heroes tasked with rooting out corruption in the city and exposing the mysterious Black Scale Coil, an organization made up of members of the Darkling Covens, Scourge, Privateers, and other elven outcasts. The Coil has used coercion, bribery, and violence to gain a stranglehold on the city. Even the Grand Conclave that is supposed to govern Anvil Guard seems to have been infiltrated by the Coil, making it impossible to know who to trust. But an even greater rot is growing in the heart of Anvil Guard, one that could consume the city entirely if it's not stopped in time. This 256-page book contains an epic campaign told across six exciting adventures. Explore the misshrouded streets of Anvilgard and venture into the deadly jungles and oceans beyond its walls. It's got a comprehensive guide to the city of Anvilgard. Discover its history and how it was founded. Explore over 70 unique and strange locations and learn about the major players in the city and what to do to stay out of their way. There's a beautifully illustrated map of the city of Anvilgard. New items to purchase in the city's black markets and new endeavors to undertake while in the city. There's 50 new terrifying monsters and deadly enemies for your binding to face. A look into Anvilgard's future, its fall to Marathai and her daughters of Cain, and the rise of Herkuran, the city of Cain. There's five one-page adventures set after the events of Broken Realms and the fall of Anvilgard. The 256-page hardcover is available Right now, for $49.99, you can grab the PDF over at Drive-Thru RPG right now for 
$1.99. Nice to see the first campaign for Soulbound available as a physical book. It's been out for, uh, for a while, a few months in PDF, but now the actual book is available. All right, that is it for the news tonight. Of course, I was talking about drive through RPG with the last couple of news pieces. Do want to mention that the Gaming Gang is an affiliate of the One Bookshelf site. So if you are going to visit, say, drive through RPG, by all means, stop by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banner ads. That way, if you happen to make a purchase, I get a little portion of that sale. And all those nickels, dimes, and quarters really do add up and help keep thegaminggang.com around. Of course, if you like this video, if you like what I do, if you like the channel, if you dig thegaminggang.com, by all means, you can always buy me a cup of coffee or some soda by going to paypal.me slash thegaminggang. And quite a few people actually use those banner ads and and swing over to paypal.me, so I really appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. Because if you are relatively new to checking out the Gaming Gang videos, you probably don't realize that I'm one of the only outlets out there that uh, doesn't do Kickstarters. So almost everybody else out there does some sort of crowdfunding to, to stick around. I do not do that. All right. Or I shouldn't say we don't do that because it's not just me. There's other people affiliated with the gaming gang as well. Speaking of soda, I'm going to reload mine over here. Yes. And in just a moment, we're going to dive in and take a look at that player's companion for Axe. But before we do, do want to mention, uh, if you watched yesterday's show, I I did a did a bit I did a did a did a did a did a did a I shouldn't be looking at one thing as I'm talking. <laughs> okay. So there's uh some some comments in chat about uh Mirkberg being a a thing of dark beauty according to Jason and uh Omanal says dueling punk death metal versus no punk yep no art punk hey it's not i don't hate mirkberg i just uh all this all this stuff that's like jumped on that bandwagon blaming here telling me to use my words i'm trying so anyway so if you watched last night you know, we took a look at the Adventure Conqueror King system core rulebook. And I pointed out, as a disclaimer, that just because I was sharing the rulebook for the role-playing game did not mean that I, you know, am in favor of the author's politics. Just the author and I are on completely different spectrums politically okay but the whole thing is i said it before i'm not a gatekeeper i'm not a gatekeeper to this hobby so of course right as the show was ending as the stream was coming to an end somebody popped into chat and they were like oh i hope you know this this and th I'm, I'm so disappointed in jeff because the author is this 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 and this fascist was uh, one of the words that was tossed out. And funny thing is, it's like, okay, so if I share a role-playing game core book from somebody who is very much on the left, people get pissed off. Some people. And then if I share a rule book from somebody who is on the far right, people get pissed off. Oh, well, don't know what to tell you. But, well, one thing I will tell you is you probably have a good understanding of what fascism is, what the definition of fascism is as well, before you start accusing people of being fascists. 
I know that's that's such an such an easy straw man to throw out there. Oh, they're a Nazi. This comes from probably a lot of people who think in World War II the Americans and Germans fought together against the Russians. Because you know that's a thing. Anyway. So I got a couple of emails today. People were very, very upset with me that I am sharing the Adventure Conqueror King system on uh, the dispatch. It's like, oh, well, I like I said, I am not here to keep people out of this hobby. And it's funny because people are asking me to do what people like me have been accused of doing since the beginning of tabletop gaming, really. And that's gatekeeping and keeping people out, which I have never done. And I got to be honest, I don't know anybody else who did. And a lot of this comes from people who are far too young to have actually ever been involved in the hobby until maybe five years ago, 10 years ago. They want to tell everybody what it was like in the 80s as a gamer. So, uh, Doug, <laughs> Doug Roberts says, I saw it and just started laughing. Kevin says, uh, so it wasn't an impulsive troll. Someone else says, after reading Gulag Archipelago, people missed the irony of gatekeeping. Yeah, I... Yeah. I just don't get it. Kevin said, it must have been after I signed off. Here was the other thing. Yes, because the person who commented yesterday, now I don't know how long they watched. I have no idea. But they waited just as I was wrapping up the show. I mean, I was at the point where it's like, hey, everybody, thanks for watching live. If you watch live, thank you very much. Like a minute before I usually will end the show, that's when they hit up, pop up their comment. It's like, come on. If you want to make that comment, go ahead. I, I have no beef with that. You're, you're entitled to your own thoughts. That's something else. Everyone's entitled to their own thoughts. You may despise those thoughts. I might despise those thoughts. But people have a right to think that. Because if they didn't have a right to think that, if we all needed to think the same thing, that's fascism. So, uh, Omanel says, we didn't have enough players to reject anyone for political views. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't have enough players to, to kick people out from anything, regardless of anything. Something else uh, I think a lot of people don't realize, those who were not around for the hobby at that point, is women, people of color, uh, people of alternate sexual lifestyles, things like that, they weren't necessarily interested in the hobby at the time. I don't remember too many girls banging on my door saying, Jeff, we, we need to play Call of Cthulhu. Let us in your game. I was engaged at the time, and my fiance used to play every once in a while, and she was like, oh, too scary. <laughs> so, Omen else says, I was super happy if a girl joined us. Yeah, I don't know. Jason says RPGs cover a lot of ground. It's more what you make of the game than the political view of the creator. Something else that I'll throw out there is that, and like I, well, I said, the author of the Axe series, Alexander Macris, I think it's Macris. I think that's how it's pronounced. I guarantee he and I would not see eye to eye Politically, or probably on a lot of other things. 
I might not be the kind of person that he'd want sitting at his game table. He may not be the kind of person I'd want at my game table. But the thing is, this hobby is should be open to everybody. That's the whole point. Regardless. It's not, oh, well, you know, it's only open to the people who are, you know, left of center. Otherwise, you know, you're not welcome. No, that is not, that is not it. That is not how it works. And it's like the same people who sit there and we'll talk about how Abraham Lincoln didn't do enough to help people of color as president of the United States, regardless of, you know, the era, right? See, I'm one of these people. I'm a history buff. I can't really make judgment outside of that, that historical setting. It's stupid to do that. But the same people will sit there and talk about, you know, oh, Abraham Lincoln was a small man. Are the same people who are like, oh, I absolutely love Charles Dickens. And we read A Christmas Carol every Christmas to the kids. Really? Because Charles Dickens was kind of a shitty human being. He treated his children like garbage as if they didn't exist. And he was, if not physically abusive, mentally abusive to his wife. And tried to have her committed to an insane asylum when she wasn't insane because that was something that Victorian men, Victorian era men could pull off from time to time. That's why the asylums were full of women who uh, were just a little too independent for their own good. They weren't touched in the head. All right. Anyway, so, once again, just throwing a disclaimer out there, we're taking a look at uh, Adventure Conquer King stuff because I am not here to pass judgment on people and gatekeep on either side of the political spectrum or any other spectrum as well. So Sarah T. pops out of the shadows to wave. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Mr. Eddie T. I think I've said hello to everybody so far. Uh, Omanel says Daryl Davis did more to stop white supremacists by interacting with neo-Nazis and KKK by befriending them. Having people not talk to each other just reinforces negative views. Yeah. Or not talking, not talking to somebody or not, um, being friendly and, you know, at least a little open-minded with people who don't agree with you 100%. That, well, that's all lost. That's a, that's a lost art. It's like, probably shocked some folks out there, but uh, over the years, I have had correspondence to the gaming gang who turned out, they you know, they voted for Donald Trump twice. I certainly did not. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know... If, they, I found out, you know, they were, we, you know, a couple of them I've met, like at Gen Con, or conventions, I should say. Once was at Gen Con, and uh, it's like, okay, well, you know, that's that's your right, that's your vote, it's okay. All right, find me here and says we are still at the end of the day human beings, even those you don't agree with and their views. Yeah. Luke Anzilotti has joined us in chat as well. All right. So enough of that pontificating. I'm basically just trying to say nobody out there is going to bully me in either covering or not covering things. One of the emails today threatened to cancel me. It's like you can't cancel something that's you know, not like popular to start with. It's like whatever, idiot. All right, so today we are taking a look at the Adventure Conquered King System Player's Companion from Autark LLC. It's written by Alexander Matt Art is provided by John Lakey. 
Laura Lakey, Ryan Browning, and William McAusland, who I think, off the top of my head, I think he does. I think he does artwork for a lot of Osprey stuff. All right. <laughs> Flaming appearances cover all games, even the shit ones. Look at D and D Stranger Things. Yes, that's right. I think it's one of. I think that's the um, most negative review I've done in years. It was awful. This 160-page hardcover is available for $30. You can get it for $25 in softcover, or you can grab the PDF normally for $10. Right now, it's on sale for $6.50 at Drive Through RPG. So let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got the Axe Player Company. Canyon. I gotta say the cover artwork for this series is is very cool. It's very nice. Uh Kevin says worse than Strixhaven. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, Strixhaven, I, I didn't uh score as poorly as the I mean, I gotta be honest, the D D Stranger Things box is just junk. It's complete crap. Omanal says, hey, don't worry. In five days, they'll find someone else to focus a rage on. Oh, they already focused a rage on somebody else already. Okay. So, somebody over at uh, Tark LLC, who I take a guess is probably the author, uh, touched base on Twitter, pointing out a few things about the system itself. So, remember, we were taking a look the right way to role play with DM James has joined us. I know uh, DM James had uh, had a nice comment on uh, yesterday's video. And thank you for the super chat. Definitely appreciate it. This Axe is a great system. They run it every week. So I was going to say that uh, sometimes people think that I'm, this is a, like a review. And obviously, this is not a review. I have not opened up this book. Got to be honest, I have not even looked at the back of the book, so hopefully I don't stumble over reading what's on the back of the book. But a few things. Uh, the setting-wise is kind of like a, a just before the fall of the Roman Empire sort of technological level. Uh, the core rules are based on BX, B slash X however you want to refer to it, basic and expert D&D. &D. And uh, some really interesting stuff. So let's take a look at the back here. And it says, the player's companion is the first expansion for the Adventure Conqueror King system and an invaluable resource for players and judges of the original fantasy role-playing game and its retro clones. So essentially, this game does, this book does not have to be utilized with Adventure Conquer King, it can be utilized with any OSR retro clone. Expand your campaigns with 19 new character classes. I'm not going to read everything. Quickly create vivid characters using 248 templates featuring pre-selected proficiency spells and equipment options. Make your own character classes using a balanced point-based system, 100% compatible with every class, and the Axe core rules and the player's companion. Bring wonder to your game world with a dynamic spell system. Invent your own new spells during play with advanced magic research rules that allow your characters to experiment, make breakthroughs, and suffer side effects. Expand the options available to new characters as well as old with new equipment and proficiencies. All right, so let's dive on in. Okay, so it looks like uh, this came out in 2012. We get uh, some thank yous to the backers. So, do want to also point out the fine folks over at Autark LCC were able LLC. No, no, yeah, it is LLC. For for a second, I'm like limited liability company. Yeah, that's right, LLC. <laughs> we're kind enough to send along this review copy. But, of course, neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang has received 
any other compensation for me to share this with you. I'm going to stay picture in picture up here, so I'm going to be cutting off the upper left portion of the book as we take a peek through, and I am not going to be looking at each and every page. So we've got the organization. We'll have an introduction, new character classes, character class templates, custom classes, spells, and supplemental rules. So let's see what we've got with some of the new character classes. We've got the anti-paladin, or as some folks would refer to it as the anti-paladin, the barbarian, in the age before Atlantis fell into the sea. That cracks my nephew up all the time. I introduced him to Conan the Barbarian a couple years ago. Omanal says, my, my former job was as a hand model. Yeah, until George Costanza ran me out. Ran me out of, out of the profession. Damn you, George Costanza. We have Dwarven Fury, got an Elven Courtier, Elven Enchanter. Nice artwork. Somebody losing their shit. <laughs> Mr. Eddie T said the same thing. I really dig the art of this system. Yeah, I like this stuff. Elven Ranger, okay. Gnomish Trickster, the Mystic. I wonder if they're kind of like a monk. Certainly looks sort of like a monk. Jason says, like a lot of games, it's how you run it. I mean, you can run anything and say, well, at least it's not GURPS. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody around Wander Worker. The Paladin. Who actually looks more along the lines of uh, a character out of RuneQuest, right? Almost looks like a Hoplite, well, with more armor. Priestess, well, we got quite a few. Shaman, Thracian Gladiator, I sort of like the lizard men. Flame here and says, damn, more shade thrown at Gerbs. Yep, 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 yep. Adventurer, the warlock, and the witch. Wonder if we've got different kinds of witches, like hedge witches. Uh, sort of. We got a few different kinds. The Harin Ruin Guard. Uh, he looks kind of evil, don't he? Okay, so then we get character class templates. Let's take a quick peek at some of these. What kind of anti-paladin templates, assassin templates. So you would actually roll 3d6. So as an example, let's take a look here. Fighter templates. So we've got Thug, Ravager, Corsair, Guardsman, Mercenary, Gladiator, Legionary, and Lancer. For a shaman, we've got a pariah, wise man, war chanter, rune caster, druid, snake handler, spirit raiser, and nomad. Jason says they met the creator of Golden Heroes. So the first RPG they bought back in the day. Yeah, Golden Heroes, wasn't that a superhero role-playing game? Omanel says Shadowrun was pretty horrible for character creation. Yes, and the thing is, I, in my opinion, now, I got to point out, I haven't taken a look at every edition of Shadowrun. I think uh, as the editions progressed, the game just got worse. I don't think it got any better. But that was, I, I had a bunch of the early Shadowrun stuff because I just thought it was such a cool setting. And then, of course, it was another one of those games that I never ran at all, ever. I don't even think I had people roll up characters for it. 
So we talked about that before, how, how many of us out there have owned loads and loads of role-playing supplements and core rules and things like that and never used them at the table. Now, of course, we've cribbed stuff from them. Every good game master steals things from other game systems. If you're not, if you're not stealing stuff from other game systems and you're not trying, that's a game master. You don't take your work seriously enough as a game master if you are not cribbing things from other games to make your your game cooler. Flaming Heron says Shadowrun isn't terrible. It's all about how people understand how the point system is implemented. People's understandings vary. Alrighty. Man Man says they played GURPS for a short time. Combat seemed to take forever. Okay, so we've got uh, custom classes. Talking about strongholds and followers, experience levels. Kind of giving a breakdown of the various, like the gnome custom classes. Nobiron. Sorry, I'm taking a guess if that's how it's pronounced. Creating new custom powers. Okay, so we get into spells. Omanel says, steal shamelessly for good ideas. Of course. Of course. I can't tell you how many times I've run a role-playing game. And some encounter out of nowhere just suddenly took a turn into something that I had read in another role-playing game adventure like years before. It's like, oh, hey, I've been sitting on this for like a decade. Now I can use it. So there's some discussion. Kevin says they regret chickening out of getting a signed copy of Blackmore D20 from Dave Arneson at Gen Con a few years before his passing. Yeah, I saw Gary Gygax every, I think I saw him at three Gen Cons when they were in Milwaukee and never went up and said hello to him or anything. And it wasn't like he was inaccessible or anything like that. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I think it was probably because we really didn't play D and D at that point. If uh, if you're not, you know, overly familiar with myself and the gaming gang, you know, I I started off with D and D in about '79, but by '81, Call of Cthulhu came out. I think, if I remember right, I think it was the summer of '81, and I just took to that like a duck to water. So some uh, some tables in that about creating your own spells and effectively what the effect of the spell is. So it's kind of telling you, giving you an idea of the, like the base cost for uh, for the player characters to create those spells. Of course, they would need to be, I would assume, of a particular level or higher maybe not so it looks like we've got some new spells as well call lightning choking grip command plants enthrall you're enthralled <laughs> just like everybody watching this stream just enthralled doubt that so we got ogre power so that's cool we got a lot of new spells here once again one of the aspects of old style old school role-playing games that i dig is the spells are not a page long description it's usually a paragraph or two and that is essentially what we're looking at here summon animals a little bit longer three paragraphs but you don't need because as a game master it's just nearly impossible for you to sit there and know every spell off the top of your head. That's why a good game master makes sure that their player characters who are magic users, or at least have access to magic, 
know their own damn spells and what they do, as opposed to having to know what everybody's spells are and what they do while doing everything else. So, all right, so we've got some uh, supplemental rules. So we've got aging. Talking about followers, proficiencies. Looks like we've got some new proficiencies as well. Just a few rules, a few supplemental rules. Not a lot. Just a few pages there. Then we get into the uh, open game license text and an index. And there you have the player's companion for Adventure Conqueror King System. I am really uh, looking forward to diving in and actually reading these. I am hoping, I can't guarantee it, I am hoping to at least have reviews of the core releases for uh, Adventure Conqueror King System. Because <laughs> it is, that is the official name. That's why it's Axe with an S at the end. I do hope to have the reviews this month for the old school for the new year celebration. Fingers crossed. Uh, I have finished up volume one of D&D Original Adventures Reincarnated from Goodman Games. I'll probably be shooting that. I'll shoot that review probably on Thursday and have that up at some point uh, this weekend. I've got a lot of stuff lined up to shoot video of. So there you have it. The 160-page hardcover is available for $30. You can get the softcover for $25, or you can grab just the PDF alone. This is all the drive through RPG, because I believe it is print-on-demand from drive through So it's very possible we were just looking, because it kind of seems like it, that this was one of the PODs from drive through RPG. Anyway, you can get the PDF normally for 10 bucks right now because there is the new game, new year sale. It is $6 and 50 cents, which is the same price for the core rule book. We looked at yesterday. So not too bad. Pretty cool. So I'm going to all saying all six books. I'm not sure if I'm is asking about all six volumes of D&D Original Adventures Reincarnated or all six books for Axe? Because I got to tell you, there's more than six books because so we're taking a look at two. I received eight. And I'm sure this is not the whole, whole shebang either. But I received eight different books. So tomorrow, we're actually going to take a look at the Heroic Fantasy Handbook because I know a lot of folks are kind of curious about maybe using Axe as more of a, a high fantasy. So I think that's what this book addresses, and we'll find out. But I will also shoot some videos of the other books as standalone. So. Uh, if you recall, last week I shared the first three volumes of the original Adventures Reincarnated, and then I shot standalone videos for volumes four, five, and six. So if you watched live stream and you were curious about those, those videos are out. So definitely check it out, including the two-volume Temple of Elemental Evil. So pretty sweet. All righty. So, uh, yes, Omanal says yes. O-A-R. Yeah, all six volumes. Uh, there are videos out for. So, and like I said, I will do that with some of the other uh, Adventure Conqueror King System books as well. If you're curious what's cooking next week, we are taking a look at Old School Essentials. So that is what we're looking at. We're supposed to do an interview with Gavin Norman, the gent behind OSE. I haven't heard back from him. So 
what my game plan was was on next Monday show, we'll look at the classic rules tome. On Tuesday show, I would share the interview with Gavin. And then on Wednesday show, I've got the first issue of, I think it's, if I remember correctly, it's Carrion Crawler. Something along those lines. It's a zine that's dedicated to, oh, no, it's Carcass Crawler. That's what it's called. Okay. All right. So that is it for this time out. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It will not only let you know when the Dispatch streams live Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. I'll also inform you when I upload other standalone videos, such as the upcoming first look at the Gaia Complex. Yes, it is a new, pretty cool-looking cyberpunk RPG. Another book I have not cracked open. That's something that I don't think a lot of people realize when I say, hey, this is a first look. I take my first looks like they're unboxing, right? I have not seen anything inside, and uh, it's all new to me. So, how I operate. Also, should point out, that uh, we get a lot of people watching the videos, especially live, and not all that many thumbs up. So I had to say, if you watch this show regularly and you're watching live, you really should be thumbing up the video and pleasing the overlords of YouTube and uh, allowing them to actually share this with more people because more thumbs means more sharing from YouTube. Anyway, of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Of course, all you guys and gals who watched live, thank you very much. Always appreciate that. If you took part in chat, you get like bonus points because I always appreciate people hanging around and chat with me to keep me company so I don't feel like a complete dork. And of course, I know a lot of people out there don't have an opportunity to watch live. Doesn't matter how you watch, you can be watching on Memorex. I really, really do appreciate everybody taking time out from their busy lives to check out the videos on the channel. It means a lot. It really does. It means a lot to me. Okay. As I mentioned, tomorrow I'll be back. We'll be looking at Axe Heroic Fantasy. And, of course, here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel by clicking right here. Check out the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch or find out what YouTube recommends you check out from the channel. And of course, once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks for watching.